Azure DNS is a hosting service for DNS domains that provide name resolution. You cannot use Azure DNS to buy a domain name. For an annual fee, you can buy a domain name by using app service domains or a third party domain registrar. Once you own the domain, you can then manage the DNS records of your domain in Azure DNS. These records created in such DNS zones can be resolved from public or external world. Let's go ahead and create a DNS zone in Azure. So here I am in the Azure portal. Let's go ahead and create a DNS zone. To create a DNS zone, I will just type DNS here in the search box and what will populate here is DNS zones and private DNS zones. We will talk about private DNS zones later because the idea is to just focus on external DNS zones. So I'll click on DNS zones to create an externally facing DNS zone. Let's click on this add button and now we are ready to fill up and select these fields. I'll select the resource group as lab. Subscription will be pay as you go. The name here would be the name of the external DNS zone. Mostly this will be name of your company. So if you're registered with your company name with your registrar, then that's what you're gonna type here. Let's say your company name is some fictitious company called alphabeta.com. The resource group location cannot be specified because this will be global resource. I'll click on next to select the tags. You can specify the tags so that you can point it to a business unit or a cost center. I'll click on next to review the settings and then click on create. That's how simple it is to create a DNS zone. The records that are created inside the DNS zone are called as record sets. So now we have to go and create a record set. Record sets are nothing but a set of records which we know as an A record, a PTR record, an alias MX record. Well, that's nothing but a record set. So I'll go back to home and see if my DNS zone is created. Looks like it's not, so I'll just refresh it. There you go, the zone is created. So now I can click on my zone, and then what you will notice is the two records that are always created every time you create a zone, NS record and SOA record. From your on-premise infrastructure experience, and if you have worked on DNS, you know that the first two records that are created when you first create a zone is an NS record and an NS and an SOA record. Now I will click on the record set to create let's say a www record and it is an A record. Now I can just type in the IP address which I want to point it to. So let's say if you have a public IP of your web server which is let's say 25.63.98.63 right. So this is the IP address of my web server or my load balancer. This is just a fictitious IP which I have typed here but in your case you need to pick up the IP address of your web server or how the routing will happen to the web server needs to be identified and figured out from the network team. So if I click on OK I will then have a www record pointing it to the IP as a type there. So if I go to www.alphabeta.com I should be routed to 25.63.98.63 which will be then the IP address of my public facing web server. Now keep in mind all of this is fictitious because I haven't purchased alphabeta.com. This is just a fictitious name that I've typed here for illustration purposes. But in production environments this alphabeta will be replaced by your domain name and then the records will be populated here. And then you will have www record, a mail record which will be mail.alphabeta.com to access your emails, etc. In the next video, let's go ahead and see how you can create a private zone.